There's been a lot of rumblings, Khaled, about one verse in particular. It's this Jay-Z verse. What can the rumors are true. The rumors are true. You know, a lot of rumors are not true. But these, it's true. Reports suggest Diddy's affiliation with a group called the Black Section, purportedly a branch associated with the Illuminati. Recent federal actions have involved a raid on Diddy due to information purportedly shared by Gene Deal and Cassie. They allegedly provided evidence regarding security footage related to past incidents. Unexpectedly, a video from an interrogation in 2018 involving former boxer and adult film star Jonathan Adi emerged, where he claimed involvement in peculiar gatherings with Diddy and Cassie, which he described as Illuminati rituals. The developments surrounding Diddy's downfall have taken a surprising turn with the emergence of this footage. Remarkably, five years prior to Cassie filing her lawsuit, Jonathan Audie's assertions from that time strikingly align with some of Cassie's recent allegations. Moreover, Audie made a series of sensational claims during his interrogation, implicating Diddy in affiliations with an entity called the Black Section of the Illuminati. He alleged being held as an ex-slave by Diddy, receiving a substantial payout to maintain silence and other startling accusations. It's worth noting that this interrogation occurred shortly after Adi was involved in a shooting incident at Donald Trump's Doro Hotel and Golf Club in Florida. Despite his arrest and charges, Adi's whereabouts and circumstances since then remain unknown, adding another layer of mystery to the unfolding narrative. According to Adi, his involvement with Cassie and Diddy seemed to involve explicit instructions from Diddy, acting almost like a controlling figure in their interactions, often speaking extensively on the phone and through various Audi devices, while Audi described feeling akin to a slave. The emergence of the 2018 interrogation video has intensified the intrigue surrounding the situation. It's important to emphasize that these details are based on unverified claims and speculative information. The rewritten version aims to present the information objectively while acknowledging the lack of substantiated evidence for these allegations. Jonathan Adi's statements aligned closely with the claims made by Cassie in her lawsuit. To provide context, Adi became the subject of questioning regarding the shooting incident at Donald Trump's Doral property in May 2018. He was identified as the individual involved in firing shots at police officers at the Trump National Doral Miami Golf Club in South Florida. As reported by the Miami Herald, Adi, originally from South Africa, engaged in a confrontation and pursuit with law enforcement officers while expressing rants about Donald Trump, Barack Obama, and surprisingly, rap mogul P. Diddy. During the encounter, Adi sustained gunshot wounds to his legs from law enforcement and was subsequently hospitalized. After the incident, he faced multiple charges. Reports state that he engaged in an exchange of gunfire with officers who ultimately shot him in the legs, leading to his hospitalization. Law enforcement officers involved included at least two uniformed officers, along with an unarmed security guard who was also threatened during the altercation. The connection to Diddy takes a more intriguing turn when examining a report from the Daily Mail, indicating that before his arrest related to the shooting, Jonathan Adi had a background as a stripper and an actor in adult films. He worked for the adult website Dancing Bear, known for producing videos depicting women interacting with male entertainers dressed in plush bear costumes. In parallel, Cassie's lawsuit previously revealed details about encounters orchestrated by Diddy involving masked male workers. However, further twists emerged with the resurgence of a video recording of Jonathan's interrogation. Within this footage, he made a string of astonishing allegations against Diddy, claiming that Diddy held him as a slave. While some of Jonathan's statements to investigators may appear far-fetched, there's speculation circulating that Diddy's alleged drug use during the purported gatherings might have influenced Jonathan's claims. Among the key points mentioned by Jonathan in his interrogation involving Diddy, firstly, he asserted that Diddy sent Rick Ross to intimidate him, alleging that Diddy, Ross, and DJ Khaled are all involved in homosexual relationships. Jonathan claimed that Diddy and Ross share a close friendship and are both involved romantically, along with another individual referred to as C. He further detailed instances of intimacy involving himself, Diddy, and Cassie, 
mentioning that Diddy would observe and film interactions between him and Cassie. It's important to note that these statements contain controversial and unverified claims. The revised version aims to present the information objectively while acknowledging the lack of concrete evidence supporting these assertions. Essentially, he would direct my interactions with Cassie, and I had approximately 15 encounters under those instructions. Additionally, Jonathan suggested that these encounters, labeled as freak-offs, were, in reality, rituals. He asserted that the Illuminati partakes in rituals involving bonding through mind control and blood sacrifices, and purportedly connected this to the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove is a secluded campground located in Monterio, California, affiliated with a private men's club known as the Bohemian Club. Annually in mid-July, it hosts an exclusive retreat attended by influential figures such as government officials, business leaders, artists, and musicians. Jonathan claimed that within this gathering, satanic rituals reminiscent of CIA mind control techniques are performed on participants' family members, among other activities, including animal sacrifices involving blood rituals. Regarding the Bohemian Grove, Jonathan claimed he obtained the information from Diddy himself. He also alleged that Diddy is affiliated with a group known as the Black Section, or the Black Illuminati, asserting connections to political elites through his lawyers, Mark Jogos and Ben Mellis. Jonathan emphasized his awareness of these details by referencing his past dealings with Diddy. He stated that Diddy is associated with the Black Section, described as a branch of the Illuminati specifically involving black individuals. Jonathan clarified his perspective, stating that his observations were not racially motivated as he himself hails from Africa. He suggested a settlement with Sean, insinuating Diddy's involvement in securing prominent contracts and widespread fame. Despite Jonathan's demeanor in the video, his claims about these lawyers were substantiated when Diddy received the BET Lifetime Achievement Award. During the previous year, there was a notable instance when he publicly acknowledged Ben Mella's father, Kenny, a prominent attorney. Interestingly, right after expressing gratitude towards his friend and former bad boy president, Harv Pierre, who has recently been implicated in a lawsuit against Diddy involving the alleged trafficking of a 17-year-old girl, he went on to thank Mark Jogos, his lawyer. According to an article by Variety, it's highlighted that Diddy and his ex, Jennifer Lopez, were instrumental in matchmaking Kenny Milis and his wife, Beth, back in the year 2000. So their long-standing friendship spans decades. Regarding Jonathan A's testimony, he stated that both before and after those intimate encounters, he overheard numerous conversations between Diddy and his business associates. Allegedly, Jonathan claimed that Diddy treated him like a servant, asserting that Diddy even transmitted an STD to him. It's purported that they reached a settlement in a lawsuit amounting to millions of dollars. According to Jonathan, they directed him on what to do with Cassie during approximately 15 encounters. He mentioned being privy to numerous business discussions as Sean frequently engaged in phone and speaker conversations, and he felt like a subordinate in their circle. Furthermore, Jonathan asserted he had a recording of one of these intimate sessions, which Diddy's lawyers initially retrieved as part of their settlement. However, Jonathan claimed he might still possess a copy. Jonathan also drew a connection between Diddy's lawyers, Ben Mellis, and their involvement with Michael Jackson, alleging that Ben was linked to the supposed dispute over publishing rights that could have played a role in Michael's passing. The Mellis family, particularly Ben Mellis, collaborated with Mark Jogos, who was Michael Jackson's attorney in Los Angeles. Apparently, he represented Michael and was involved in significant discussions about Michael's royalties, which amounted to $860 million in 2017. These royalties are typically controlled by the music companies and various entities in the media and entertainment industry in the United States, with most being managed by individuals like Kenny in New York. Interestingly, the resurgence of this interrogation coincided with recent scandalous reports involving Diddy. Allegedly, there were claims that federal authorities raided Diddy's residence following his departure to London in an attempt to evade media scrutiny. However, these reports lack verification, leaving uncertainty about whether the FBI is genuinely conducting an investigation concerning Diddy. If there is an ongoing inquiry, it's unlikely that official announcements would confirm or deny it. 
Nevertheless, fans are now emphasizing the significance of Jonathan A.I.'s confession, given that he made these statements five years prior to Cassie filing her lawsuit, and many of his assertions align with her allegations. Adding to the intrigue, there's an absence of available information online regarding Jonathan Adi's circumstances following his charges related to the 2018 shooting incident. All articles referencing this event date back to 2018, confirming Jonathan's formal charges, yet there's a dearth of information about subsequent developments or outcomes. The situation regarding whether he faced sentencing or his current whereabouts remains ambiguous. However, a new development arose on December 15th, shortly after several celebrity blogs highlighted Jonathan's association with Diddy. Speculations on social media vary, with some suggesting he might still be in jail, but no reputable media outlet has validated this claim. Amidst this, fans are vocalizing their thoughts on the situation. Some express belief in Jonathan Adi's credibility regarding Diddy and Cassie, highlighting the influence and connections of the involved attorneys. Others speculate ominously, suggesting that individuals with such insights tend to vanish, a consequence of knowing too much. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned, and we will catch you in the next video.